Okay, so this video is going to talk about what's called um, autocorrelation or sometimes serial correlation, where a lot of times this will occur in data when the error terms of some regression forecasting model um, are correlated. And this can cause many different problems that the um, estimates will be off with our regression coefficients, um, our variance terms might be underestimated. So we want to be able to know how to do a test, so hypothesis test, of if the error terms are autocorrelated. So this typically happens over time, okay? So um, a, a lot of times data values will be correlated from past time periods. So to do this, this is called the Durbin-Watson test. And this is the actual formula for it. And all this is saying is take the, um, and we're going to get all these values right here, the error between our predicted, okay, and our actual. And then I'm just doing each one of these in a column, because that's how they show you in your textbook to do them. Um, each of these in a column, because some of these I'm going to need to total um, to be able to then plug into this formula. And then after I plug it into the formula, which I'll, I'll show you, but in your textbook um, as well, you, as everything you do with a hypothesis test, you te get your test statistic, which will be this Durbin-Watson, and then we will compare it to a value in the critical table, okay, two values actually, and if this is above the upper value, then we reject the null and say there's no significant correlation. If it's below, or I'm sorry, I said we reject, we fail to reject, there's no significant correlation. And if it's below the lower value, then we reject the null and say there is autocorrelation. All right, so I have some information here on um, bank failures from the FDIC. And what we want to do is we want to make a regression forecasting model that attempts to predict the failed bank assets involved in bank closing by the number of bank failures. So in other words, my failures is going to be my independent variable. My dependent variable being assets is what I want to predict. So I need to do a regression, right, to be able to get do this prediction. So let's go, let's do it. Let's go to data, data analysis. I want to do regression. I want to tell it my Y values are right chair. I want to tell it my X value, hello. My X values are right here, my independent. Um, I did select the labels, so the labels were selected. Where do I want to output this? Or I guess we'll put it right here because I can, I can move that out of the way. And so I think everything looks good. I'm just, basically I need my um, slope and my um, y-intercept to be able to come up with my equation. So there it is. Let's put you out of the way because I already told you what this data is about. And so here now I can see these actual values, which are going to be my values that I use for my prediction equation. So my intercept, so equals, I'm going to absolute reference my intercept plus my slope absolute reference times my independent variable, my failures. So this is going to predict the 8189, the assets. And I hit enter and I take this and I copy that straight down. So I get all, all my values. Then the error, remember, is the actual minus the predicted. So I get that value right there. I take this and copy it straight down. And then I'm going to find the error squared because that's the denominator. Um, and so I'm going to actually end up totaling. Okay, so that's what that says, the sum. So I did this in a separate column because I'm going to get this total. So all I'm doing is equal my error squared for that particular time. Um, I mentioned this before, if you don't like this whole scientific notation, just widen the cell. I bring this straight down and probably, you know, it'd be a good idea of all of these, um, you know, to have the same decimal places, but I ain't going to worry about that. I'm just putting information in. That was kind of weird. 
And then here, what this is saying, and so now I'm looking at the, oh, let me go ahead and sum this. So this is going to end up being my denominator. All right, so let's highlight that because I'm going to need it to plug in here. And then this is saying that you would take the error for this particular time period minus the error for the time period above. It's probably a little easier to read over here than the way I wrote it. Okay, so the error for that particular time period. And then, so we had to skip down one because there's not one above that. And I get this value. And so I take this and copy it straight down. And then I square these values. So that's that part of the formula, the squaring. Bring that straight down. And then as I did here, I sum this. So I'm just copying this formula. And as you're going to see, that's going to be the sum of those values. All right. So I have, this is the, maybe I'll put that. This is the numerator. And this is the denominator. So my results then would be my numerator divided by my Oops, did that kind of fast, huh? My numerator divided by my denominator, and I just hit enter. So this value right here, okay, that's my test statistic that I'm going to now go look at a table. So I'm going to bring it over here, okay? But again, these tables are in your book. Just be sure you're looking at the right level of significance. Um, a couple of other things is the, the actual value of K, is the number of predictors. Well, we only had one, right? The failures. And then N is N. So in this case, because it started at two right here, um, would be 18. So I'm looking at K equals one, 18. I get 1.16 for the lower and 1.39 for the upper. So you know where I got those values. Let's put them, let's move that out of the way. So compare this to the lower was 1.16 and the upper was 1.39. So I can see that looking at this, it says, let's make this bigger. It says if this is above that, and it is, we would reject the null, and in this case, we would say that there is no significant auto auto correlation auto correlation between the between our errors. All right, and that's auto correlation. So it's a little tedious setting it up, but to be able to get this formula and then know that you're going to have to use this other table, okay, um, to find your critical value.